if you're just seeing it as I need to stand like this, posture needs to be like this, I need to swing like this in order to therefore hit this shot. And then that might be true on a flat line and for a certain flight. But if then a situation changes and the slope changes, you have to have these adaptabilities. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kara Gray here today at Rygate Hill on this short game facility with one of the top short game coaches in the UK, if not the world, Alex Buckner. Alex, thanks for coming along. Thank you very much for coming. Today we're going to be talking about how to improve your short game, but in a way that you've never thought about before. Let's get stuck in. Let's do like another variation drill, mm -hmm. all right? And we're gonna do variation and posture. Okay, variation so, and posture. Okay, yeah, this is Great. gonna be mad. Because I like instantly, <laughs> I was like, that was fun. I went from like going into a position where I was hitting hooks and slices. I was like, give me high and low. I know I can do that. You well, this is it, right? Okay, and you can do like, you know, biggest outcome, smallest swing and smallest outcome with the biggest swing and how on earth do you do that stuff like that you know it's all great at the end of the day i think it's worth doing you say reaching their ends but posture is one that people don't actually talk about even though if the ball slightly sat a certain way or you're on a certain slope you're going to stand to it differently so it makes sense to practice standing to it funny so this is also testing your adaptation though and it's amazing how naturally you adapt so i'd just like you to hit a shot while on your heels off again. Completely on wheels. Yeah. Toes like feeling a little bit in the air. You say you don't need to be like silly in the air, but just a little bit in the air. Okay. All right. Okay. So you can have your feet a little bit more on the ground than that. That's it. If we're going to do it, I'm going to go to the extreme, right? <laughs> well, you, you, you do whatever you need to do in order to still maintain strike. And I've got to be on my heels the whole time. But that's the only thing I want you to do. trying to find a way to stay on my heels. Okay. So you can have your feet a little bit more on that. You say just it's slightly in the air. That's about it. Yep, good. Okay, but the weight at least in all in your heels. Very nice. Now you can see what parts of the body it stops you from moving. My shins are on to fire. A degree. Shins are on <laughs> fire. Okay. Uh, imagine your torso would have been in a very different spot. It's amazing how you got the club to the ground using your wrists and arms rather than your body because your body couldn't move properly. So if you find the fact that someone's body isn't moving too great, where's their weight? Stuff like that. Now hit shot while with all your weight on your toes. Just feel the opposite. Feel what you can do. Look at these calf raises, see if they pay off. Okay, so heels don't need to be that in the air, that's pretty extreme, but you say at least a weight into your toes. Very nice. Okay. Now I want you to play around with your torso bends. So I'd like you to be over like Michelle Wee. Keeping the pitch of the shaft the same? Or? You do whatever you want. Uh, good question though. So immediately gripping down. No, why are you gripping down? Why am I gripping down? Yeah, do you know why or not really? Well, when I am bending more over, that's going to pitch the handle lower, right? Which is going to cause this to arc more around my body which means it's going to be harder to control the low point and the height of yeah. the swing. Unless, unless you grip it like that, right? Yeah. Do you want to keep my grip the same? No, no, no. I'm just, as you say, but it's interesting how yeah. immediately people move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there would be variations to that. Yeah, I'm gripping down until the point that feels uncomfortable, then I find a mid-ground. Right. And then I soften my arms and I go, okay, can I still have the range of motion while gripping up, gripping low? Mm. Very nice. And now I'd like you to stand bullet straight with your torso. Now, we normally get people to do this, you say, three balls, because the first ball is normally pants, because they haven't adjusted properly. They're not understanding what to adjust. It's not my most masculine position I've ever been in. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, the legs are now getting involved. They got to, though, because the torso is in a very... So it's just the upper body, right? Yep. So you can do whatever you want in your legs. All of a sudden, the weight's changing in your, to in your toes. Nice. They say that would very much leave you stuck on a certain flight because you couldn't really get that face low or you know um, open and low with the uh, with the shaft lane. So you're starting to understand there's some limitations to certain things, but you're also maybe being more in that posture of in certain outcomes in that sense, right? So now lean all your weight left. 
kind of if you want. So everything's got to be stacked, including your shoulders. Very nice. Now the other way. Open stance, close stance even. Say so hips have got to be open, torso's got to be open. Oh, like everything. Yeah, open. yeah, yeah. Not, not just the stance. All right. That's super close. That's it done. All right. Okay. Am I passing? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? You say you maintain strike on all of them. You say it's testing that ability to understand, well, what on earth do I need to do with the body to still maintain strike? if I stand like this. Really testing how you adapt to all the different postures, what you need to do with your legs if you're certain body positions in this part. Now for golfers are actually like yeah, doing this drill and going, well that feels comfortable. <laughs> Sometimes you can start understanding where the breakdown is in their posture and why they can't all of a sudden find the ground or why they're too deep into it, why they're hitting a certain place, why they're hitting certain flights. Because you obviously saw from certain body positions how that would basically limit what sort of shots you can really do. So you can start to understand people's DNA and where they sort of sit sometimes. But also then, actually, if you're on this lie, would I want to be more like that? You know, if the ball's above me, would I want to be more straight? Well, I think I would probably, actually. Would I want to grip down? Yeah, I probably would, actually, to be fair. But it's tying them ideas. If you can start to tie these ideas of these extremes and these adaptabilities to a situation, you've got more of a chance to execute the shot that you need. If you're just seeing it as, I need to stand like this, posture needs to be like this, I need to swing like this in order to therefore hit this shot. And then that might be true on a flat line and for a certain flight. But... If then a situation changes and the slope changes, you have to have these adaptabilities. But if you don't practice them, it's hard to be any good at them. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, so just work into extremes. Work into extremes, find the middle grounds and stuff like that. Um, but it's good fun at the same time. Yeah. Really good fun. Just reminds me, it's, a, it's the first time I've really enjoyed my practice in a long <laughs> time, right? Because it, most of the time when demonstrating as a coach, you're not really trying to do anything fancy right well for the outcomes that i'm trying to achieve with a lot of players a lot of my coaching around short game and i suppose it wraps up exactly what we've talked about i'm not a specialist coach like yourself and this is a fantastic format to follow i actually do this in the full swing all the time right. get players to go i want you to make a minute long swing completing your backswing completing the follow through right i want you to exactly what we're doing with ball flight with full swing um I've never really done it too much with short game, mainly because I don't teach that much short game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, th I think we need to get more into that. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying the fact that, like, you say, if we're going to play a to the bat flag there yeah. with the green sloping this way and, you know, being a very receptive green and that, you need to play a massive hook of your 60 degree. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying that whatsoever. Yeah. But I'm saying at least you have the ability. And if you need to be a little bit more on the draw side... Yeah to maybe help that ball not slide up the face, make sure the fact that the spin loft's not too high, make sure the fact the ball's gonna come out at least fast and rolling, mm. then you have the ability to just maybe touch on that scale ever so slightly. Because mm. once you start understanding these real big extremes and then finding the middles and then reaching the parts and what posture would allow you to, to maybe make that ball mm. do X, Y, and Z, nothing seems that difficult. No to achieve all of a sudden and you're starting to go well that was close actually I know what I need to do and make that ball to do what I want it to do but he said we don't practice that way and I think that's a that's a bit of a bummer from from our behalf when I when I actually I do a variation of this but I do it specifically based on I get every player to kind of assess the shot after they've hit it but I talk a lot about the pre-swing rehearsal and what they're doing and observing that yeah, yeah. right and for the majority of golfers, I think they would benefit a lot from just spending more time. Contact impact is the main cause for frustration for players. It's not necessarily speed or direction. I'm talking about recreational golfers here, thinning and blading. Yeah. Right? If they can get that ball somewhat coming off the face, right, and they're not chunking into the ground too much or blading it, that would tend to, relative to the club they're using, produce some sort of consistency. And then from there, they build a feel around that. That. Correct. Right? Contacts yeah, yeah, yeah. first. Correct. Because 
if that player is hitting back here and then blading the ball, they're scared about going too long. So they swing slower. When they swing slower, then they hit the ground. They think they need to speed up because they need more force to get it through the ground. And then they just yo-yo from either side. Yeah. Rather than focusing on the one thing that matters, which is contact. Yeah. Right? And from what I'm talking about here is like, this is based on my full swing knowledge and the way that I do it. And I work around that, but I assume it's very similar to the short game. Very similar, right? Yeah. You say you can't build a house without foundations. Yeah. You know, yeah. you say you have to be able to achieve the basic thing to therefore vary from it. So yeah, if you're thinning it and fatting it, it's a different story. We're talking about one level from that. Mm.